What's going on? What's going on, y'all? A little bit late, but we here. We are back again for another episode of review of the Shy Season Six, Episode Fourteen. Is this Episode Fourteen? Episode Fourteen, Smoking Mirrors. Okay. Honestly, um. <laughs> I don't know it was an okay episode it was an okay episode didn't really give me much but it was an okay episode um so hopefully this review won't be long because now i have a headache i have a headache for my own reasons but you know again if you didn't see the other review happy father's day to everybody <sighs> we're gonna move past that because <laughs> listen y'all girl if i i'll tell y'all later um <laughs> so we are back so the episode victor if i could just sum this all up and um victor starting off the episode having all these nightmares and you know sweating profusely because he's having these nightmares of everything that has been going on that's been stressing him out that has gotten him to the place where he is at meaning on house arrest facing life in prison you know and so he gets waking up and he's so paranoid and out of it and you know disillusioned to the point that he wakes up and he gets his you know weapon that's about to bed and it's just jake y'all remember jake don't live with him no more jake lives in kevin's old place and so he comes over there they both scared or whatever because he like who is you and all this stuff or whatever because he wasn't expecting nobody to come over there and he woke him up out of sleep but he just being a little brother and a caring brother and again one thing about this show that I, I can constantly say is the maturity or the evolution of the characters because when we saw Jake and Trig when they first came onto the scene together when Trig came on to get Jake Jake really wasn't featuring Trig like that he wasn't featuring Trig at all now you got Jake being the little brother that Victor wanted him to be and what I mean about that is you see him, he's not being childish. He's not, you know, he's looking out for his brother. He's checking up on him, making sure he's good. He literally came over there because he was like, I'm checking on you. I know you need to get out this house. You probably need somebody to talk to. I need, you know, just being there for him. And when you look at Jake from old to now, you know, old Jake, you know, younger Jake or whatever, he probably wouldn't have did nothing like that. But now he's doing that. And, you know, that was a very, very good scene to me. And even <laughs> even Victor had to say, oh, the men's circle is it's is working. You know what I'm saying? And, and technically it is, you know, um, to the point where, you know. He was concerned about the fact that Fatima wasn't there. And he was like, you need me to get you another bitch. And he said, don't say that, but no. And um, just trying to up his spirits. He was like, I'm trying to cheer you up. So that's going to have a Halloween party at his place. But he can't go outside because he's on the uh, ankle monitor. And so he was going to have it at Victor's place. Victor said, listen, I want them young kids around here. He said, we ain't young. I said, y'all young compared to him. And when they were sitting on that couch, pause. I'm finna fast forward for a second. When the party actually happened and, and, and Victor and Shy was sitting on that couch and they was like, damn, we the old heads now. We the uncles. Baby, do you see this? I'm getting gray hair. Okay, mind you, that's the gray hair that I've always had, but y'all couldn't really see it. Now it's pronounced. And it's probably pronounced now because, listen, I... I <sighs> I need a retwist, okay? That's just basically all there's to it. I need to shape up, you know, like a little trim. Because he gets he, he evens out my stuff. And I, I, I need a retwist. That's the gray hair that y'all don't see. I've had that gray hair since I was in high school. And so I'm just sitting here like, as soon as he said that shit about the old heads, I just felt it when I looked at my hair. I said, child. He was like, listen, I'm about to ask him, let's, let's play some spades. He said, no, don't know that. Don't throw those spades out or whatever. I said, at this point, spades is not a young man's game, okay? That is not a young person's game. You have to be seasoned to know how to play some spades, okay? Because they will whoop your ass if you don't. But anyway, so yeah, they gonna have a party there. He's trying to lift his spirits up. Meanwhile, um, this whole situation with Nuck and Nuck, if you buck, right? Nuck, if you buck. Let me tell you something. Nuck and uh, uh, Emmett, 
I never would have thought I would have saw Emmett get so in his feelings and jealous like he is. But at the same time, I 100% understands it because he literally was prepared to be this boy's Ronnie's father. Okay. Regardless of the fact that he got three other kids, he got three kids of his own. He was so prepared and willing to take that position of being his father because he knew he didn't have a father. He knew of the situation of how he came into this world only for that to, and, and he developed this bond with him. You know what I'm saying? A father-son bond. Only for that to be turned on his head when you find out that he actually does have a father that's alive and that's here. And now that father wants to come in and actually try to attempt to be a father. Now, the jury is still out on Nuck, okay? For right now, Nuck, he's all right, you know? Um, he's coming over for Halloween, you know, Amy has a little issue about it because of the simple fact that it's breaking up his routine, their routine. And it's understandable. They're going to have to make some adjustment. And what they need to do is they need to get on the same page and they need to all sit down together and talk it out because it's okay. It's one thing that you are stepping up and you 100% trying to take responsibility for your child, even though you didn't know that that was your child, but we know, and we can respect the fact that he is doing that. He's not being forced to, he's not neglecting. He's not saying, well, that ain't my baby or nothing like that. But again, it's like, is he really doing this because... He really care about the child, which I feel he is, or is it more so because of the guilt that he felt because of what happened to Keisha? I feel like it's a mixture of both, but I want to say that it's more so because he do wants the child. And either way, I'm just glad that he is stepping up or at least trying. But for them to get on the same page so that they won't be bumping heads the way that they was bumping heads, like when they went trick-or-treating and you know, to find out that the little boy, he's upset and crying because he couldn't get this type of candy that he wanted at the certain house. And, you know, Nuck was like, daddy going to get you the candy that you want when we get back home. He was like, I'm finna Instacart that right now. And Emmett had to say, no, you can't do that. You got to put some structure in there. On the one hand, I get where Nuck is coming from when he said, because Emmett said, you can't reward bad behavior. Now, I want to let Emmett know just because he started crying because he couldn't get what he want, that doesn't equate to bad behavior. That's just a kid having a reaction to something that he doesn't fully understand, which is that he can't always get what he wants. And that does not mean that that's bad behavior, right? But also, in a sense of that statement, you cannot reward bad behavior. That's what you also need to know, too. But at the same time, Emmett is like, I don't want... We are not trying to have him grow up, none of our kids to grow up feeling entitled, uh, feeling like they are spoiled brats or anything like that. And Nuck said, well, white kids can grow up and be entitled and spoiled. How come we can't do that to our kids? Listen, that is a good question. That's a good question. Um, And I'm pretty sure it'll cause some type of debate, but that's an actual good question. In this situation... It's like, it's okay for certain people to be spoiled. It's okay for certain people to be entitled, but then it's not okay for us. And we don't want that to happen to our kids and people. Once we find out that a black kid or a minority kid is spoiled and entitled or whatever acting, oh, oh excuse me, they're going to feel some type of way or they look down upon or whatever. But at the same time, <laughs> if you know the limits and if it's spoiled, meaning like they get whatever they want to the point of like material things, but they also ground it, I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't see nothing wrong. That entitlement, yes, that's the issue. You're not entitled to nothing, but to be spoiled a little bit, I don't see nothing wrong necessarily because I'm telling y'all, if I get a kid, child, that baby, oof, baby is going to be sick. What you want? Okay, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get. I'm telling you, they gonna have me wrap, boy or girl. It's gonna have me wrapped around my finger for real, for real. I told you I'm gonna be a helicopter mama. They gonna be, they gonna be sick of me, bitch. Okay, but um, anyway, I get it. But again, they have to get on the same page, and then the whole little sit down between Nuck and um Keisha, and him saying, you know, you know, talking about the boy's health and the fact that he hasn't had a flare up since uh, you know, they figured everything out. And he was just like apologetic for the fact that, you know, he was carrying that gene and he didn't even know that disease. And it was like, it's okay. Most of most people don't know that they carry it, you know? Um, <clears throat> and 
she established that she still got love for him, but she ain't in love with him, and that him, her, and Emmett are cool. You know what I'm saying? They still together. Moving on from that, again, what will work with that is the fact that they just need to all sit down and get on one accord. It's not going to come together right away, but they need to actively work on it, okay? Meanwhile, speaking of the um, Keisha and her mama, let me tell you something. Nina and the Brad... They finna, they, they, they together. Okay. That's just basically what it is. They had a little date sitting there looking at screen two, trying to establish the fact that she ain't trying to be no rebound, but Hey, it is what it is. Time, time is ticking and we ain't got that much time to lose these days. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay. We ain't got to ease up into it. We already did it. Baby. It is what it is. Dre to move on. You can move on too. You got to live your life, mama. That's what, uh, Shantae, AKA Mr. Brett was saying. Okay. And you know, Nina all giggles and everything, talking to Keisha about it. You know, honestly, I'm going to be real. I like this part about Nina, okay? Because most of the time when we see Nina, she's so stressed out. She 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 pissed about something. She crying about something. She worried about something. She angry about something. To see her smiling and to see her giggy like, giggling like a little schoolgirl, like she's 16 years old and she got a little first crush, it's a good look on her. I like that likeness about her. Moving on from that, um, the kids had the Halloween party and everything was cool, right? Now, this is the part when I, Maisha said she don't want to do music no more, okay? She just felt like at this point, it ain't what she want and she felt like she want to do the photography. Okay, fine. You know, Gemma said do some pictures for Britney because at first she was like, is this because Britney is in the picture and all this stuff? And she was like, no. And I feel like it is, but she said no. But, you know, Gemma said you did do some good ass pictures when um you took my uh, family por uh, pictures for the uh, Christmas stuff or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. So they get to the parties um, and Maisha's just snapping pictures here and there. Like she's taking her craft or whatever. She's taking it serious. Okay. And so at this point, um, everybody is there. It's an all black party, meaning everybody's dressed in all black. It's not no costumes, whatever. Girl, at this point, Papa shows up. He ain't even in black. It looked like he was either in a burgundy suit or probably a reddish burgundy whatever color suit. Either way, he pops up, right? And he's handing out flyers to go to Hallelujah Night at the church. Let me tell you something, Papa. No. <laughs> Some of y'all used to go to Hallelujah Night on, uh, on Halloween. Girl, I would be so mad if I had to spend a holiday at the church. I'm so sorry, y'all, to my church going people, but y'all, it's too restrictive. Religion is so restrictive. Okay, I can have a relationship with God myself, but baby, I want to be free. Okay, listen, got to be free. free. Come on now, that's just all that I want to do, bitch. <laughs> going to church on Halloween and Christmas. I mean, Christmas, I can kind of understand, but Halloween, I get it at the same time. But let me tell you something. It's a lot of Christians out here that y'all, you know, y'all want to count this person out. Y'all want to say they this, and then you want to help for that or whatever. But it's a lot of y'all that uh, celebrate this paganist holiday, which is Halloween, All Hallows Eve or whatever. All your asses, well, all our asses need to be up in the church on Halloween, to be quite honest. Okay, y'all celebrating the devil. I just want y'all to understand that. But uh, anyway... You know, I'm just, I'm fucking with y'all. But Okay. All right. All right. I said, now, Papa, don't come up in here. Now, now, when you came up in there, Papa looked like he was ready to get down. Because he was just like, it's this air about Papa. Like, he got new clothes. He, he wearing suits with no ties and everything. And I'm just like... I want him to get rid of them braids, okay? The braids is not doing nothing for me. And it's it's more so because of how they hang in the back because he got a little he got a little he got a little he got a little, little thick roll back there. You know, us big people sometimes we got rolls. This and my roll is gone away. Alright, as I've been started losing weight, I can just literally feel I have I had a little fat roll in the back of my neck. It's gone. <laughs> It wasn't so it, it it wasn't so pronounced like if I was to put my hand back there, I could have felt it. But baby, I noticed that that bitch is gone. Dad, I said, yes, all right. I said now popping them little scraggly little things, they be bothering me so much. I'm like, time up. Time up so they can come together like that. That'll look better. That'll look better, like the little ponytail. That'll look better. But anyway, I now Papa used to be judgmental a little bit, but not to this point. It, it just feel like his character, I don't know, is so crazy. You would have thought that Papa, it seems like he's on a good track. But Papa is 
degressing if you ask me he's the only one that's going in the wrong direction like for real for real because you are linked up with a pastor that your father could not stand for the same reasons and he for for for, for the reasons that we are seeing at first we could have thought that it was hating like you just jealous because he got this big congregation and he probably got the money and all this stuff but no he is a crook and papa is going down the same road he is not for the people. He is for himself and he's about money. Okay. Listen, Papa came up in there judging them and all this stuff. Next thing you know, we see the first lady blatantly coming in there. Now this, did that bitch just don't care. Did you see how she rolled past Papa? She literally had to roll, rub up against him just to get past. Not that she was trying to do anything, but she was literally trying to get past. She kind of looked at him and kept on going like, oh, well. Like, she wasn't phased by it or nothing. So, I'm sitting here like, what type of arrangement that her and the, uh, the pastor got with each other? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that probably was a bad angle, too. Girl, you know, they be coming out anytime. <sighs> the, 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 what is it? The ambulance. But, um... Yeah, I was just like, she's so bold with it. And over there flirting with Jake and, you know, Eminem looking and all that stuff. And Papa trying to say, you know, that ain't right. And he was like, I don't give a fuck. I just was like, oh, man. Papa get over there to Hallelujah Night at the, um, you know, at the, uh, uh, at the church. And he got the parents up in there. They, he giving a speech about, you know, how Halloween is bad. And then the pastor get up there. You know, we get that or whatever. Next thing you know, all of a sudden, this turns into trying to get money for uh, a new building for the kids or whatever. That's going to have a pool and a state of art studio and all this stuff or whatever. And it's, it's all about the building fund. Okay. You know, that building fund. Who's ready to give some money? Girl, scan a QR code so that you can get my uh-uh. Mm -mm. If I can't give it to you in cash, you're not going to have my bank information because I just don't trust you, okay? But, you know, after all of that, Zeke had sat Papa down and uh, had a little conversation, gave him a little bit of change. And he was like, wait a minute, all this is supposed to go to the, uh, to the fund or whatever. He said, listen, you need to get paid for your work and I get paid for mine too. So take that and go do something good with yourself. Papa didn't think about it twice. He was like, okay, fine. Old Papa probably would have questioned it a little bit more. But see, he was like, what you going to do with your money? And he was like, well, I'm going to do something for the missus. Papa said, hmm, speaking of the missus, you know what she was the other day? He said, why? I'm not her secretary. And once he said that, I said, huh. Now, this conversation hit a couple chords with me. And I got a couple of ideas. And I want y'all to tell me what do y'all think about this, okay? Because... For you to respond that way about your wife and you are the first, you are the pastor, right? And she's the first lady. You don't know where she's at or whatever. You know how strict these, you know how these churches be, right? And she's out here being very worldly. She's out here being very worldly. You know, I mean, you are being worldly too, but you don't care. Y'all being sloppy with it, okay? At least Papa don't know what you're doing. But see, Papa should, anybody else should know that your wife sleeps around with younger men, okay? Your wife is cradle robbing. Your wife needs to be fucking locked up. And at this point, Papa like, um, well, how long y'all been married? And he was like, five years. Why are you asking me these questions? He said, well, can you trust her? He said, I could trust her as far as I could throw her. And then he said, how far can you throw her? And then um, the pastor says, you know what? You need to go ahead and get home before your mama start worrying. And Papa said, oh, okay. And so at this point, it was the way that he was looking at Papa and he was looking at the situation. Now, the first thing that popped in my mind, I said, you know, they obviously has to have an arrangement. Either they have an arrangement because clearly what we see, we don't see him sleeping around with nobody else. We see the first lady sleeping around. And usually what we will see is the pastor sleeping around. So what I'm gathering and what's kind of tinkling in my brain is giving probably a little not necessary. Mm. Is the pastor on the um down low? And do the first lady know? It's giving a little bit of that because he didn't get mad. He didn't get mad. And again, we don't see him cheating. We see the first lady cheating. So, what's going on? What's giving? That is what came through my mind right away. Right away. Okay? Anybody else? Anybody else got some suggestions? Put it down in the comments. Um, but I'm going to need, I'm gonna need um, Papa to get away from them. Okay? 
Meanwhile, when it come back to Victor, girl, um, Alicia was talking to her home girl, Maya's mama from um girlfriend, Miss Judge Bradley, and basically, you know, they cool or whatever. And she was like, uh, you know, they was talking about the fact that Alonzo got killed and all of that. And, you know, don't you, <clears throat> she, what Alicia said, she don't know who did it, but she know exactly who made the call and they're going to take care of it or whatever. And then they started talking about Victor and, um, you know, she was like, how well do you learn, know about Victor and all this stuff to be doing all this shit? She said, I trust him well enough because, you know, she's trying to get him out of jail and she's going to be the judge on the case. And she going to ask the old girl. Aren't you tired of putting black men in jail? Oh, girl said no without hesitation. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> she said no. <laughs> I said, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. But she just so happened to be the judge on the case. And, you know, because um, what's her name said? You add his nomination or whatever. And so it'll look bad on your part if you put that man up in jail and he come to find out to be innocent. You're not going to get that. OK, so because of that, she wound up finding guilty. Uh, uh, Victor, the case got dismissed because she said basically it was a Brady um, flaw or something clause or whatever that the, the FBI you know, did with the evidence or whatever against him. And it was just fucked up or whatever. So he got out, right? Cool. Mind you, when they was at the party, Shia was talking to him or whatever. And, you know, Victor has this way of somewhat judging people on what they do because now all of a sudden he's a good guy and he does have his way of looking down on people sometimes. And he does that with Shy. And so Shy popped back at his ass and he was like, but nigga, I'm not the one with the ankle monotone. So you gonna throw that up in my face? Hell yeah. You want to throw up in my face what you did for me and all this stuff because people talking about how Alicia was there for him and you know, um, Oh, you think you something because she gave you a leather coat and, and a car, some shit like that. I said, well, hell yeah. He said, well, listen, bitch, let me just tell you this. If it wasn't for me, Alicia wouldn't be talking to you. She wouldn't be helping you. I said, Shad is feeling himself. He is really feeling himself, okay? And I mean, maybe, maybe. Because when he got out of jail or when he got out that court, the cop pulled up. And you want to know what he said? The window poured down, and then Alicia was like, Congratulations, or uh, no, thank you're welcome. And then the other window in the front poured down and said, hm, hm, Congratulations. And it was shot. I said, What? <laughs> anyway, meanwhile, at that party, we got this whole situation going on with Bacardi. Bacardi was telling them about how, you know, um, Coogee came to him in his dream and was telling him basically that you don't need to be doing this and you wasting your life away and all this stuff. Baby, Brittany popped up. Brittany was there. Bakari ain't want to talk to her ass and she felt bad. So bad to the point where later on after the party was over with, they was over there at Gemma house looking at the pictures that um for uh 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 Maisha did for Britney's little photo shoot and she didn't want to see it but she was in her feelings and she was feeling down because she finally told them that you know she was working for Duda to spy on Bakari and you know she don't want to tell him because she know that he's gonna hate him but I mean hate her but um and it was like you need to so you get that off your chest and so she's in a lose lose situation at this point also, who's in a loose little situation? I need Tiara and um, Marcus to, uh, is it Marcus? Jim and Daddy, go ahead and break up. That man don't want to be with you. Ever since they took them pictures, that man has done any and everything to not stay in the room with her. I don't understand why you keep letting that lady come over there if you don't want to be in a relationship with her. Because that's basically what you're saying. You don't want to be in a relationship with her. Talk about something. I'm not used to being told or, or checking in and all this stuff. Maybe you should be single. Yeah, just be single, girl. Okay? I don't know what it is. You let that man get into your head and you want to be his missus. And he just not there no more. Okay? He just not there no more. Break it up. Move it on. All right? Meanwhile, um, this whole situation, like they keep on throwing in all these multiple storylines. We got storyline with Roslyn, Roslyn up there sleeping with Serena, the uh, um, the hard of hearing, the hearing impaired, uh, 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 stud. Okay, girl, I said now we just saw y'all meet last week, and you mean to tell me in the span of a week you know fluent uh, sign language 
um, Miss Roslyn, they having full-fledged conversations up in that bed with their hands, okay? And I'm not talking about under the sheets, all right? No. She talking about, so listen, who be looking out for you? I want to protect you. All you need to do is let your man, your husband, mind you, Serena know the game. She know that she married. She was like, you just need to let your husband borrow, me, borrow peace, okay? And I can protect you. And what do you know? Went down there to do that and got a piece from her. Dude, I looked at uh, Ross and said, so now you know sign language? Serena been teaching me. I said, <laughs> I said, ooh, you know, girl. I feel like Roslyn probably in a little bit of trouble. She liking this girl because I ain't finna, if I'm just playing with you, I'm not finna be trying to learn deeply. She learning fluently them sign languages, girl. All I need to know is yes or no. Um, Anyway. I was just like, <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, you got this dude that popped up on Darnell looking for a job. Played by Jackie Long, right? I said, Jackie Long, you look rough since Esquire from ATL. Life has been kicking your ass, okay? For real, for real. But, um... Basically, he came up on Darnell and was like, he need a job. And he was like, what the fuck you doing here? I don't need to give you anything because I took care of you while you was in jail. I put monies on your book and all that stuff. And come to find out, Damien, Damien of all people, he had robbed a, uh, a candy store and oh boy, Jackie Long character took the fall for it. And I was just like, why is his old ass with his young ass? I was just really confused by that. I need them to explain that. And even Darnell said that, said the same thing. And so because of that, you know, he had to go talk to um, Emmett and to convince Emmett to give him a job. And so we get this conversation with Damien and oh boy. And basically, oh, excuse me. He said, the only reason why I didn't do nothing, I took the bid for you. Um, it's because your daddy said that you was going to be something. And come to find out, that was a fucking lie, because look at where you at. He was like, nigga, I'm still young. I took a year off of high school to figure out what I want, and what it got you. What it got you. We both working in Smokies. It was like, listen, I'm sorry about what happened, but you not finna come here and make my life a living hell every day. And he said, yes, the fuck I am. I said, oh, okay, okay. That's how we doing it. That's how we doing it. Also, Professor Kadeem. That's helping out, um, you know, Bakari. He went down there and talked to Duda. Come to find out, him and Duda went to school together. And he was like, you had so much potential, but you was a bully back then, and you a bully now. And he was like, you need to let um, Bakari go. Of course, he wasn't going to do that. And I feel like he kind of probably made the thing worse. And that's what he told Bakari. Bakari was a little upset. But I understand the dilemma. But see... Even though it may seem like he probably made the situation with Bakari and Duda worse a little bit or a little bit more funky, I do appreciate him trying to help him out and trying to be that positive male role model in his life, you know? Um, also, this situation, which is so goddamn random, but I ain't hating because I like black love and it's queer month, so there's that. Um, but again... It's random as hell, and did we need it? No. <laughs> I need them to tell us what's going on with this. But before I get to that, uh, well, let me just go here. Quincy, who was working with Victor, Victor's little uh, uh, chief of staff and all that stuff, him and his boyfriend is having some little issues, okay? Basically, the boyfriend won't get off of Dudai's nuts, meaning that he think Dudai is the end-all, be-all, and he really got his back and all that stuff. And do that's gonna do this for us. Do that gonna do that for us. And we always in debt to anybody. So that's just what it is. Everybody's in debt to somebody. And he just cannot see the fact that if it wasn't for Duda, Victor wouldn't be in this situation. And he was like, okay, and Victor already probably had some stuff on him anyway. And I said, that's beyond the point. He is finna take the fall for something that he did not do that Duda did. Okay, this is a murder, and you're trying to make excuses and you're trying to be blind to it. Quincy is fucked up about it he's just like he pissed about it okay so at this point he gets on instagram and he's scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and see his ex who his ex is i said a blast from the fucking past all right man i had just seen him on abbott elementary as one of the students or uh, not the students but i think a, 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 a parent or something 
Jace, what's his Jansen Atwood? I said, oh my God, you know what? Let me tell you something. Black men, the ones that are good, black men, y'all age so well sometimes, okay? For the most part. When y'all keep y'all self together, woo, y'all age like fine fucking wine, bitch. And I'm, I'm, girl, I can say that. I can say that, you know? And I just need somebody to tell me, is Jansen Atwood. Is he gay or bisexual in real life? Because just about every role I've seen him in, he's playing a gay man. And the first time, and it's those that don't know who that is. If you ever watch Noah's art, he's Wade. Okay? He's Wade. And I mean, that motherfucker got fine. Baby, I will fuck you in the... Let me stop. Let me stop. I will strap you up. I will strap him up. Okay? He is fine. Child, I was just like, oh my god. So he basically used to go with Quincy, came back, linked him up, they fucked in the house. I mean, it was cute or whatever, but again, I was here for it. But at the same time, I'm sitting here like, this random, do we really care about Quincy? Absolutely not. But okay, thank you. I mean, it's queer money. Hey, pride. But <laughs> it was so fucking random, okay? Like, is this going to be a one and done type of situation? Are y'all trying to make him something? The whole situation with um Zayn going with uh Kenya. Mind you, oh, oh, Kenya, you know that he does illegal stuff. And you're going to ask, I just need to know if I'm safe with you. Obviously, he, you're not. Okay, come on. You should already know that. But when... Lady May popped up at Bianca's place and dude, I thought that it was Bianca and Lady May was like, or I should say Alicia. She was like, I got the keys. And she said, sit the fuck down. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> dude, I said. And she said, fine, remain standing because you won't be standing long. Okay. It was like, your son tried to kill me. And she said, yeah. You know, sometimes you got to send a woman. You shouldn't send a man to do a woman's job or whatever. He said, oh, so you going to take me out? And he said, in due time. Next thing you know, he winds up trying to put a gun, uh, 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 no, choking her out. And he said, I could kill you right now. Bitch, all of a sudden we heard a click. And I said, what is that? We saw the muzzle of the gun come up on the back of his head. And then all of a sudden it pinned. And Rashad said, get your hand off my woman. Well, <laughs> we claiming people now. Oh yeah, and dude, I said I know it was. Uh, I know Zay was meeting up with you the night that I got shot at. I said, Child, Zay, you in trouble, boy. But that was something. Shy said, Get your hand off my woman. I said, Oh, damn. <laughs> and then she goes, I got soldiers too, bitch. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit. But that was the shag, y'all. It was cute enough. Y'all tell me how y'all feel. And I'll see y'all later. Peace.